Hey guys, back here, part two. So, now I gotta figure out if this thing's even gonna work. So, before I throw the wrappers away. So, I'm gonna hook it up to my 12 volt power supply. Uh, right there. Alright. I do actually have a variable power supply, but I'm gonna deal with that. So, I made these little dropper leads here. Let's see. Glasses is on. Alright. So. Ah, screwdriver is too big, uh, too big enough, too nice small screwdriver. Alright, so let's fire these up. I haven't even fired them up yet, so I don't even know what's going to happen here. Um, my power supply and power. Alright, so I'm going to go try the, uh, MKS. I'll try the 8-bit eight bit board first. It's going to be Marlin 1.1.9. I'm not sure if it's even flash with Marlin yet from the factory or not, so... Actually, I should use my other leads. They don't touch. Alright, let's try this. Alright, get some lights. I should probably hook this up to my USB uh, thing here. But uh, I'm actually printing right now some other stuff, so I don't want to mess with that. Alright. Let's go inside that board works. So this actually one would be a Marlin, so the, it'd be actually flash on the board. Whereas this one's actually by default coming from the factory that, well, the 32 bit board, the SKR, SKR 1.1 is running smoothly aware. And it picks up the configuration file from the SD card from what I read so far. I'm totally new to smoothly aware, so. Actually, I might, even keep, I might keep it on there. See if I can get it to work with the smoothly aware. Let's see what I like better, Marlin 2.0 or Smoothieware. Let's try this one. Okay. Looks like I got power. The LED came on. Alright, so I have a little USB cable that goes around. It goes with this laptop and I already have the device manager open up. And what I'm looking for is a virtual COM port. <clears throat> and because it's the Smoothieware, from what I read, is this should actually be detected as a flash drive on that laptop. So let's check this out. Uh, okay, good, good. Yeah, it's worth it. Okay, cool. So, setting up device, that's good. Let's see the actual flash drive. That's the flash drive on there. And COM port, this is what I'm looking for right here. Interesting, it came with two COM ports. Okay, so that's definitely a good sign. Alright, let's try the. Uh... Alright, so one other thing I noticed is that the uh, the Marlin board seemed to power on when I had it just connected with the USB. Like it didn't need the external full power to power up the board, but obviously that's not going to work in production because you need to power the steppers. Alright, cool. So that's looking good right there. That's typically what I see with my ANET board. Something similar to that. Alright, so first checks are looking pretty good. So I think I want to try the uh, display here, this TFTP32. And this thing actually was was designed to actually work with these boards. That's what this port is here for on the uh, boards there. So let's try this out. Alright, let's take a look. So AUX1, and I'm assuming it goes to AUX1. And then also, there's other ports, it looks like, for Wi-Fi. And, uh, looks like external SD card. So that's interesting that it's actually, like I said in the other video, this is like a mini computer. It has its own ARM processor right there. And, uh, pretty cool. So let's see if this thing fires up. Alright, so I have no idea what's going to happen here. Alright, let me move it right there. Okay. Rap rap. Okay, I don't even know what firmware is on this thing. That's rough. I actually am printing out a pretty cool case for this thing right now. This little thing right here. But, so I have no idea how to work this thing. I just, it's the first time I ever fired that. Let's see, I'm just wondering if you can do more. I wonder if there's like a 
settings. I want to see what firmware is on there. Okay, about, let's see, that's usually where the firmware would be. Okay, 3. that's the latest firmware, so 3.03. .03. I was on their website. I wonder what the Wi-Fi module does. I mean, I know what Wi-Fi does, but I mean, I wonder how it communicates and what's the point of it and how you would communicate with this device. Does it have a web interface? Can you send prints wireless to this thing? What's that for? Okay. Also, I don't have that, but... Like, I'm running Raspberry Pi 3 on that thing. So, uh, you know, Aquaprint. So I'm just trying to figure out what would be the point of that. Filament. Okay. That's cool. I mean, it's way better than this old LCD. All right, so that's... I, mean, I know it works with the... Uh, well, power's on, at least, with the, uh... Like I said, I have no clue what version of Marlin is. Marlin's even on this thing or not, so... I have no idea. So this one's running Marlin, this one's running Smoothieware. So let me fire up this one real quick, and I'll come back. Alright, guys, so I spent a few hours today messing with this thing. I got, uh, Marlin 1.1.9 set up on this, uh, the 8-bit printer. And it has, um... <clears throat> Yeah, I wanted to do this one first because I wanted to make sure I can get everything to work on the 8-bit version and then kind of compare everything. These are almost identical boards with the Marlon 2.0, at least for my printer, this ANET printer that I'm putting it on. So let me show you real quick. I have this left over from my, my uh, I just to hook up to my 12-volt power supply, this thing right here. And uh, that way I can actually work with it in the house rather than a power supply. So a few things I'm disappointed about in this LCD thing, this TFT32 uh, display, are it's actually not a real display. It's actually more emulating like like a computer. So to to sending G code commands, and it's not really like. I guess my worry now is that I can't control my BL touch with it. And I'm still trying to figure that out, and I can't figure out baby stepping. So maybe there's a custom way I can make an icon. I'm not sure yet, but. Like I said, I'm still learning this stuff, and I spent about another hour getting this thing to be able to communicate with the with the board here. And there's two different ways you can fix a problem. I fixed it in Marlin, the firmware. I decided to change the baud rate to, I think it's a uh, 250,000. So um, yeah, so you can actually either do it in the, the device here, or you can actually do it in the firmware. For me, it was easier because I don't really know this 100% yet. So. I'm not going to go totally into depth with Marlin just because I'm still kind of learning this stuff myself and I don't want to act like, act like I know what I'm doing here. Um, okay, so let's, so I did actually hook up the uh, X motor so you can kind of see what's up here. So let me change this to 10. So you can see me go. So like I said, that's running Marlin 1.1.9. And I actually have all my settings set up for this ANET printer already. I just copied them from my ANET Marlin config from the ANET board. And then, uh, like I said, I had to disable the servo pin because the BL Touch is a different, you know, it's a different setup for the ANET board. I did a video on that, but it uses pin 27. But So I did actually get the trinamic driver set up. I got the voltages set. These are 2208. I had a little bit of drama there getting the thing compiled, you know, with different... Uh, well, once I get more familiar, I'll show you what I had to do. But I had to disable a thing in the in the comments to I enabled this in standalone mode or legacy mode. So basically, I'm not controlling the chips in any way. I'm just basically letting the chips control themselves almost. Like there's a way you could actually run jumper wires and actually have a control in real time if you wanted to. But since I'm still tr I'm just trying to get this to work. So so once I get this fired up and and figured out, I mean 100 percent. And then uh, I'll start messing with the 32 bit board. So, cool. Alright, guys, yeah. cool. I got it going for this weekend. So, I got actually Marlin 2.0 on this SKR 1.1 board. So, it actually definitely helped having this 8 bit version. You know, getting it to work in 8 bit first, you know, the regular you know, Marlin 1.1.9. And then basically copying the config over to this thing right here and making a few adjustments here and there. But, <clears throat> yeah, mainly <clears throat> for BL Touch. So, yeah, there's not, there's like, actually there's like zero documentation on this SKR board, so. Uh, another thing I was kind of wondering too are these jumper settings here for the for the drivers. Like, there, I couldn't find any documentation anywhere for those drivers. So, uh, I did get it to work, but I used the settings from the Gen L board. So, 
plug this in and uh, we'll see what's up. All right. Marlin 2.0. And I got this thing working too. The, uh, I'm going to change the logo on the back of this thing. But let me show you quick. This is a stepper motor. It's connected to the uh, X motor. Let's uh, do a move here real quick. And we'll do 10 so you can kind of see it maybe on the, on the page. See? So you can see it moving. That's about as far as I tested it so far. And uh, I'll go back to Proner Face. I'm going to hook up my USB cable to it. And uh, hook it up to my laptop over here. And uh, show you that I actually am connected. I can do some M500 commands. So, uh, hold on. I'll show you on Proner Face. All right. So laptop right here, I'm going to open up Proner Face, so this is connected to COM6. Right, so now I have Proner Face open, still connected, mine actually connected on COM6, and you'll notice that when you first uh, load it up, the uh, flash drive, the little flash card right there, will come into Windows as a flash card, it's, on this computer it's H drive, but, oh, I didn't mean to close, I didn't minimize there, so okay, I hope you can see that still. Printers online. Let's do a M501 command. Okay. Yes, yeah, no like configuration on me. Like a, I haven't modified it yet. So okay, let's take a look real quick. Let's do a motor test. So I'm going back and forth. Front face. And there we go. We're going. Just communicating with Windows and front of face. And this still works too, by the way. So, cool. That's the that for this weekend. Uh, I also got this little thing in here. It's a little adapter. Not an adapter, but it's a splitter. Because actually, my ANA board actually runs on a uh, two Z motors. So I wanted something actually I could get split off one into it, the two motors to drive the two motors. A couple other challenges I'm probably going to face are the figuring out the BL Touch, the pin settings here for BL Touch. Not a lot of documentation on that thing, so. But uh, that's my BL Touch on there, and I've got to get going. Figure out what I'm going to put on the board here, to make it work. That's got to look at the diagram. I should be able to figure it out. You know, it needs five volts and a couple different uh, other little minor things. But <clears throat> that's, I guess, one of the things I'm still trying to figure out here on this little uh, screen here is I want to get. Is a uh, baby Z, you know, baby stepping, and BL Touch Control, which I probably not going to work, but uh, BL Touch is not actually that important. I can always do it from Windows, or I can do it from a uh, uh, Ras or uh, Octopi, Octoprint, and uh, but baby stepping is definitely nice to do, you know, be on on the screen. But all right, guys, I'll see you next weekend, and uh, I got to print some case covers off. I've already printed this one out. For that screen, uh, I'm gonna print the cover lid for this to get the board in there and set up that 120 millimeter fan. But uh, yeah, I already went through and I adjusted the voltages for that thing. So once I get this whole thing figured out and working, then I'll go through the process of uh, doing the firmware. You know, it's a, the, the process is a little bit different. Like on this one, I use an Arduino IDE, this one, I use Atom. So cool.